Voici donc Soha Seguir. Meet my friend Kelly. Kelly is 35 years old and has pain in her jaw. Because of her pain, Kelly struggles to do a lot of things that you and I might take for granted. She can't enjoy her favorite foods because it hurts for her to chew. She can't pursue some of her hobbies, like singing, because it hurts for her to open and close her jaw. At times, the pain is so bad that Kelly can't even talk because it interferes with the pain. Imagine living with pain like this, pain that interferes with your ability to eat, to pursue your hobbies, and to socialize. This is the reality for Kelly and other people who suffer from temporomandibular disorders, or TMD. This type of jaw pain affects one in 10 people, which means that it's likely to affect some of you here today at some point in your life, if it doesn't already. It also affects women more than men, like it does with Kelly. TMD affects up to 12% of individuals, and half of these individuals will find TMD painful. For some people, this type of jaw pain in interferes with the jaw joint and can lead to clicking sounds, but for most people, it affects the jaw muscles. Jaw and facial pain is actually one of those types of pain that hurts a little more because you don't realize how much you use your jaw until you're consciously in pain. You need your jaw to be able to eat and to talk. When you're asleep, you sleep on your face, and that can also affect the pain in your jaw. So when you're thinking about how much pain people with TMD experience, it's a lot. And a lot of patients will report feeling isolated because of their pain because it interferes with their daily activities. Some people experience this pain every day, but that's not always the case. However, 50% of people with TMD will experience this pain as a recurring pain over five years. So now you're probably wondering, if I get TMD, what do I do? At the moment, all we can do is treat the symptoms of TMD, and that is through medications like pain relievers or muscle relaxants, or through physiotherapy. However, these treatments are only treating the symptoms of TMD and not the underlying causes. Because to be quite honest, we don't fully understand those causes just yet. But I think that we can find new treatments for TMD if we begin to understand the underlying mechanisms of jaw pain. And I think a good place to start doing this is by looking at the brain. But before we start looking at the brain, let's talk about some of the risk factors of jaw pain so that we know where to start looking. One of the strongest predictors of this type of jaw pain are things that we all do. Clenching our teeth, grinding our teeth, chewing gum, singing, or even yawning. These are examples of oral behaviors, and they make jaw pain worse. We also know that oral behaviors are a coping mechanism for stress and anxiety. Think about a time that you have been stressed. Did you ever notice any tension in your jaw or find yourself clenching and grinding your teeth, maybe chewing on the tip of a pencil? These behaviors are quite common, and you're not alone if you've experienced that, because research has shown that oral behaviors are a coping mechanism for stress. So now that we know that stress can contribute to oral behaviors and that this in turn can make jaw pain worse, we can start looking at the brain to try and understand this a little better. A study in rodents has shown that there is a brain pathway between the stress and anxiety related brain region and the brain region involved in jaw muscle function. In rodents, this pathway has been implicated in reflexive behaviors like prey hunting, which makes sense because animals are going to attack with their mouths. Humans don't really have a need for prey hunting anymore, so, but we do have this pathway. We just don't know what it does. So my research wants to explore this pathway in relation to jaw pain so that we can better understand the relationship between stress and anxiety, oral behaviors, and jaw pain. So in my research, I'm trying to look at this interaction in the brain. And to do this, I invite people with and without jaw pain to come to my lab where, and undergo a brain scan, where we essentially take pictures of their brain. 
I take pictures of their brain as they undergo some tasks. And one of my tasks involves showing them some really unpleasant images to make them feel stressed inside the brain scanner. Oops, brain scanning machine, I guess. And what I'm trying to look at is the brain activity when they are stressed and what else is being triggered at the same time. I think that we'll be able to see the stress-related brain region and the oral behavior brain region interacting with one another. And what I'm really trying to look at is how these two brain regions are talking to each other. In other words, I want to see if these two brain regions are active when people are stressed and anxious and when they are clenching and grinding their teeth. This will help us to understand the function of this brain pathway on a day-to-day -day basis in humans and really understand how these behaviors are happening at the brain level. My second goal is to look at this brain pathway in people with jaw pain. Because I think that this pathway is going to be a little different in people with jaw pain than people without jaw pain. So for example, if I invited Kelly to do my study and she got a brain scan and I got a brain scan and then I looked at our brain scans and compared them side by side, I think that the brain, Kelly's brain regions for these two specific regions are going to be talking to each other a lot more than my brain regions where when I don't experience jaw pain. And what I'm trying to say is that I think Kelly's brain regions are going to show hyperconnectivity, which means that they're more active because of her jaw pain. If we see a difference in this brain pathway activity in people with jaw pain compared to people without jaw pain, we might be able to understand the underlying mechanisms of how jaw pain work. We'll be able to show how stress and anxiety and oral behaviors contribute to making jaw pain worse. And this is why my research is so important. Because by understanding the underlying mechanisms of TMD, we can find newer and more specific therapies for TMD and other types of jaw pain. That way, instead of treating the symptoms of jaw pain through medications like pain relievers and muscle relaxants or physiotherapy, we can start to target this brain pathway itself and maybe find ways to influence this pathway to reduce pain for people with TMD. Ultimately, I want people with jaw pain to improve the quality of their life and be able to enjoy the things that they once loved. I want them to be able to go out and eat their favorite food at a restaurant without worrying about their jaw pain. I want them to be able to socialize again and feel less isolated because that's not a great way to live. My end goal is to help people with jaw pain feel less pain and help people like Kelly and Kelly herself enjoy their lives again.